All right, so finally, we got Magnum in the garage, and finally, it's getting what she's always wanted, always, always. needed, always deserved. Was getting rid of this shitty three quarter inch axle shaft transaxle and swapping it in for. You know what? What we have here is a Peerless 820. We've been trying to find a few of these for a long time, and we fucking found a couple. Magnum is the uh, first pick. Magnum's the, the obvious it's choice. All right, so the main reason we're doing this swap, like we said before, is that a three quarter inch uh, axle shaft diff does not hold up to a one inch axle shaft diff, like the Peerless 820. Now there's other diffs that you can put into this, but they either have, sorry, we got other people in the driveway here. Uh, they either have an input shaft on the side, which is a vertical, which is a horizontal input, <laughs> or which, uh, like an 820, is a vertical input. Mm -hmm. Now, Tony's mower is set up for a vertical input, so we have only really one choice we can do, and that's a peerless 820. It just makes sense. It does make sense, and it's gonna make it easier. So we're gonna show you guys that we can take one of these little shitty things, convert it to a nice 820, and the best part about that is that the mounting surfaces should be in the same area. So it should be a relatively easy swap, but we just don't like doing it too easy. So what we're going to do... Gotta step it up a notch. Exactly. What we're going to be doing is actually stretching the rear of Tony's mower because we found that a couple inches difference on that rear end or on the front end makes a huge difference when crawling. Mm -hmm. So that's just what we're going to do. So Yeah, and Magnum was the one that was always the lightest mower and always at risk for tipping. Always... That front end has been lifted up all the time, so having that back end stretched a little bit will move so much weight farther forward, make it a little safer for your boy toe, and a little more capable. Yeah, exactly. And not to mention that we also built the wheel wells to make it sit further back, so as most of you guys probably exactly. have seen, the tires do sit too forward in this wheel well, that's about to change. Let's do it. All right, working in the garage again. As you can see, uh, Tony's looking a little different. <laughs> no, we got Nick in the garage today. Tony's out. I think he's camping or whatever he's doing. But uh, me and Nick <laughs> are going to get going on the 820 swap here. So what we've done so far, obviously, open up the 820. Now, when we first got this diff, it was found in a, in a junkyard, in the scrapyard. Someone was throwing this out, so we did not know what, to look, look, what we were looking at. Obviously rusty shafts and stuff on the outside, but get her open and damn. Yes, it's very black and greasy, but that's what we want to see, honestly. Gears are all in good shape so far. Grease isn't too bad, no metal shards, so I'd say she's usable for sure. Clean her up a little, get her welded. And yeah, get, get the swap going. Now we got a lot to do, because uh, we're doing the stretch, as we said, so frames got to get cut out. But uh, first thing, obviously, we need to do is clean it and weld it. Okay, so a little work done. Got her nice and cleaned up. All the grease off. Looking for just a little bit of great brake clean and some rags and some elbow grease. And uh, now we're working on getting these shafts cleaned up. So as you can see, this side pretty rusty, and this bearing does not want to go anywhere. So wire wheel, some scotch brake, and now this side. Slides right off, and uh, our wheel will go on there nicely too. This is what we mean by clean your diffs before you weld it. Yeah. Don't need those anymore. Haha. Uh -huh. uh, she's officially welded. Took those out because it honestly just adds to the complication. Both shafts are spinning at the same time. As you can see. Spin this, brake spinning, axle spinning pretty slowly, but... Yeah, we ran her through the gears though, everything spins easy, all bearings are still intact. This is a welded diff and ready to get put into the mower. Um, I'll be going over what I'm doing, I'm working on a skid plate for it. But uh, the next thing to do is, I guess, uh, cut this freaking frame apart. <laughs> what do you think about that? Make her fit. Uh, yep. Alright, so after a bit of grinding, some saws on. <laughs> Almost got her, buddy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> there we go. There we go. Get, it. Get off of there! We don't want any more mice. <laughs> oh, there it is. All right, so we're gonna put an eight twenty in here now. <laughs> that one. Oh. All right, so bumpers cut off the frame along with a few uh, few pieces we just want to do uh, straighten out. She's right. definitely straight. <laughs> so moving in, like Tony said, we had some pieces of metal from the original frame that we beefed up with some angle iron. But uh, the original frame is very uh, wavy and uh, all over the place. So the idea we're going to be doing is, uh, as you can see, we cut out all of that back frame. But uh, we do want to run the original bumper. We're going to cut off the rest of that frame on there and it's going to sit somewhere out here. Just like we said, we're going to be doing the stretch. So with that, the new frame is going to be built with some angle iron and some C-channel coming out. We're going to run some two straight long beams so that we'll have a nice spot, nice flat surface to mount our 822. And then off of that, we will be building the, the round frame pieces. And uh, you'll see how that kind of frame gets built. I have no idea how that's going to look personally, but uh, that's just how we kind of build because uh, it's really hard to plan that kind of stuff. But uh, anyways, we're going to get to this because uh, there's a lot of work to get done. And like we said, Maylong's coming up. Quick, so let's get to it. <laughs> we got some pieces welded in. We use some uh, quarter inch, I think this is inch and a quarter, inch and a half uh, angle iron. So that's going to be our main bracing of the frame. So we just got tack welded in for now. So you're probably wondering how do we know what our angle is on the frame? How is this transaxle going to sit straight in there so the pulley ain't all wonky? Well, here's your answer right here. Angle digital finder. Nope, digital angle finder. <laughs> uh, Rogue Fab hooked me up with this guy when they sent me the tube bender. So I'll show you guys how it works. As I've shown you in the previous video, it's a digital angle finder. So it finds the angle digitally. Okay, so we threw it on this one. And we ended up with around 10.4 something-ish. And then we went to the other side here. And we threw it on and ended up with a similar number. So this is very close. This is 10.4. Eight, eight. So that's point three of the degree out, not even, which is like ideally right where you want. It's not even a degree out from where it is. So once we actually bend this into place, they'll be spot on. So the next thing we're gonna do is brace up the frame, and uh, we'll show you guys that once it's done. Check it out. We got some work done here. So we got the angle iron pieces in the brace more of the frame and then we also got this tube in the back as well uh, tack welded in there so this is where our frame uh, is now now <laughs> is that <laughs> now uh, we're going to drill out for the transaxle and get that mounted in like we said we did a three to a three and a half inch stretch which is a big difference so uh, let's get to it all right so like we've shown you before this is a peerless a20 and uh, we got a couple brackets we're making. So the problem we're running into is with when we're widening, widening the front or widening whatever you want. And in the frame here, uh, we run into our mounting bolts, which are the first two holes there, are on the inside. So they line up right here on the corner, and then the outside two bolts line up on there. So we're kind of screwed. So as you can see, we're right in the middle. So what we did is made up a couple plates there. We'll put two 3 8 bolts instead of these little tiny bolts here. I'm not sure what exact size those are, but uh, we'll be putting 3 8 bolts up through the frame. Um, and that's just a way stronger solution to uh, what we got going on here. Plus, we can build a little tiny uh, frame, or not a frame, a little uh, brace over the hump here, which is uh, pretty decent. So let's get to that. Okay, I know y'all are probably wondering with the frame all cut curvy. Well, it was just wasn't easiest to cut that shit, so we it just ended up curvy and whatever. But uh, we're putting a piece in front of this so that will all get welded. You won't see it, so don't worry about that. It will look nice like everything else. So let's get to it. Now we do a lot of different custom things and different fabricating things at the OKOM shop here. And this is one of the very important ones that I suggest you three quarter inch axle shaft moffs are doing and uh, any uh, 820 people. All right, so let's get into it. 
So as you can see on the far left here, this metal contraption actually goes under the bottom of the of the A20 here, and that's a skid plate slash brace because uh, the only difference that I don't like about the A20s compared to like the ones that are musty is these don't have a cast iron case, so they are acceptable to uh, drop it on a rock and uh, break into the case. All right, so the top here, like I was showing you with these two little brackets here where we're gonna put three eighth bolts through to mount that to the frame itself to actually connect the transaxle to the mower. I built this little top brace guard as well. So this is just that going that extra distance and making sure that Tony ain't gonna have any issues on his mower. So I've grinded it down a little bit. I'm gonna weld the underside and then I can start grinding this down nice. And then uh, these two are almost finished. They just need to get painted. All right, so it's pretty easy to see how this is going to be sitting on here. You can kind of see that's where the bull gear is down here. So flip this upside down. But you can just see how much open case we got here. And we do a lot of rock crawling. And if Tony dropped out on a rock and a rock went through the case, that could just ruin the whole, the whole swap all in one little go. So now we can drop it down nice and hard on rocks with this piece of metal. And uh, yeah, if you're wondering how we tied this onto here, we uh, tapped out the uh, the bottom uh, mount holes. Don't bother with this. This is just my temporary mounting right now. But uh, as you can see in here, we tapped the top holes out to a different threading than the mounting bolts. So the mounting bolts that hold the case go into here, and then we tapped another, the last little uh, half inch of the uh, tab here to uh, run our own bolts to actually mount the case or mount the uh, brace to the case brace to the case anyways like I was saying this is a very good mod you guys should be doing uh, bracing your case is a great idea and it's very 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 well proven watch some videos I've hit my case many times 